Good evening, church. This is Pastor Scott. Uh, welcome you back to your, your connect groups. We are, we are pushing through this. We've been having great church. Uh, the Spirit of God's been moving powerfully. I was excited about what God did here this past Sunday. And we are, uh, we are gathered here again tonight, and I hope you're enjoying the fellowship with one another in your, in your connect group. And it's, it's good to have you back. I, I hope that you, you have found that committing to this has is, is been beneficial to your walk with God. So let's begin tonight about, uh, or by talking about a very important area uh, of our life that needs fresh air continually. Uh, we, are, we, we are a three-part person. Uh, we are body, we are soul, and we are spirit. For time's sake, I'm not going to get into uh, Romans chapter 7 and 8, but you can go through those at a later time. But it talks about the struggle about these three parts that we have with, that, that these three parts have with one another. Each of them wants to be in charge. Remember, we're talking about the body, the soul, and the spirit. Each of them want to, d desires to be in charge, and they want to dominate the other two. And we look at Romans chapter 8, verse 35, and we know this scripture. It's, uh, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? And we look at this scripture, and so often, you know, our, our focus is on somebody else. Our victory is because somebody else, or our defeat is because somebody else. And we're, we're always blaming who. I was up in... Uh, Las Vegas Sunday and, and listening to my pastor preach. And he talked about uh, this particular subject about uh, often we look at what shall separate us, uh, but it's, it, in fact it boils down to who shall separate us. There's always an individual in our life, and that's why we uh, uh, there, there's always an individual that affects our life, but ultimately it boils down to us, you as an individual. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 35, it talks about tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, and sword. All these things affect our own self, our being. And that's often where we, we fail is, is because of what, become, what, what comes against us, what we think should be going on, how we think Things should be done. My husband is doing this. My wife, my kids is doing this. And we, we base uh, a lot of things on how, or, or we base a lot of areas of, uh, uh, of our life but based upon how it affects us. And it, it, we, we become selfish. And we have to look at these three parts. If we don't, if we don't work on these three parts, and I, want to, uh, I don't want to jump ahead of the lesson here tonight. It says here, for some, the part, the, the part of them calls all the shots. There's, so if there's a physical temptation of any kind, it has complete disregard on how the soul feels, and it does not care about how it does for you spiritually. The physical temptations that you... Uh, are, are faced with every day does not care for you spiritually and it has complete disregard on how your soul feels. So when you go out and you say, well, I'm just going to appease the flesh for a little bit. I'm just going to, just for this one time, I need this. Uh, and, and remember, what, when you give into the flesh, you are, are tearing down uh, your your spiritual inner person that, that that God is working on. When the soul is in charge, emotions call the shots, and it has complete disregard for the body. And in some cases, it will destroy the body of its feelings and will destroy the spiritual part of you as well. So the goal for every believer is for the spiritual man to be in charge. Romans chapter eight verse five and six says this. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. If your sinful nature 
body and soul is in charge, then we need to figure out how to get the Spirit in charge to help us like a life that is alive. You're, you, you, you want to experience joy? Alcohol is not the answer. You want to experience joy? Uh, all these temptations of the world is not the answer. We must find out how you can get your spiritual person in charge of all three. Mind, mind you, it says, if, but they that are after the Spirit, I'll, I'll go back, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So we have to, what we're trying to, what we're going to talk about tonight is how we can get your, your spiritual person, your spiritual inner man in charge. If you could look at it at, at, at a uh, game that I, I played a lot when I was little, uh, King of the Mountain, the strongest kid pretty much always wins. It's the same way in you, whatever is the strongest will win. The goal of the lesson this evening is to have fresh air blown back into your life so that it leads the other two parts, the body and the soul. Romans chapter 8, verse 9, it, 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 it sends this message. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. So let's talk about how we can revive the spiritual part of our life so that it's not something that you do out of duty, but it's something that you uh, enjoy doing. You, you, you have to enjoy living for God or else it's going to be something that I'll do it today and I'll do it, maybe I'll do it next week. It has to be something that you enjoy doing. We need to breathe fresh air into four areas in our life. Your prayer life, your Bible reading, your worship, and your relationship with other believers. All four of these are critical to you having a strong and spiritual life and walk with God. And your spirit is, and it must be, once you accomplish these four, four areas of your life, your spirit will be, your inner spirit will be the king of the hill. So let's start with the first one, the Bible. The book is alive. There are times with all of us that the Bible has came alive by reading it, hearing it preached, words that you've heard over and over. But this time, it came alive. You received, and this is what uh, you look into, uh, there's, there's two, two words, uh, logos and rima. But rima was what we're going to focus on tonight. It means the word revealed. The Bible is the revealed word of God. I had a lady tell me one time I was, I was in an uh, uh, office and the drafter, I was, I was running some plans by the drafter after I had drew them up and she made them look uh, how they're supposed to. And we got to talking about the Bible and she told me, she said, well, I've read the Bible from cover to cover and it's never done anything for me. And I asked her, I said, well, do you know the author? Well, what do you mean? And the conversation just just drifted off in 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 that area, uh, of, of in in that particular subject. But here I, I want to tell you 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 have to pray for God to reveal the word to you. If it's just a subject matter like learning science history, uh, it's great to learn the word of God. But it's important to have the word of God revealed to you. There's a spiritual side of it. So we we have to make sure that. Our Bible reading is not just something that we read as a subject matter, but we should pray, God, let your word be revealed. Let it be rima. Let it be something that is an utterance into my life. The second area of our lesson that needs to come alive is our prayer life. Prayer simply is just a sincere conversation with God. As your pastor, I would love to see you start praying a customized prayer or a personal prayer with normal words that come from your heart. So often we want to recite things and memorize things and, and 
That's religion. God wants the prayer to come from your heart. What I believe is going to happen is prayer is going to be is going to bring fresh air into your life and you are going to have a fresh air experience in your prayer life when you begin to talk to God from your heart, not from your mind, not from reciting, not from memorization, but you begin to talk to God from your heart. And then God begins to talk to you from His heart. That's a beautiful relationship. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7, it says, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their ta taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Too often God sees our affliction, and that's what we bring to God. And as our prayer life is all about our affliction. But what if your prayer life wasn't only based on your affliction? I had a bad day. My husband said this. The pastor said this to me. I'm always getting picked on. And our prayer life is always about the affliction of us. But what, what would happen if our prayer life was simply just to draw near to God? For us to desire to have a relationship with Him more, and more than just, uh, Daddy, can you fix this? Daddy, can you help me in this? Daddy, I need this. And, and, and without always bringing affliction to Him, just, just coming to Him in a manner that you just simply say, God, I just want you to know that I love you. Your prayer life is important. How often you pray is important. And how you pray is important. The next area that we want to push ourselves out of our comfort zone is worship. I think too often we base our worship on what we like rather than God. I want to re-emphasize re that. I think too often we base our worship on what we like rather than God. Kind of going off, off my notes here. Um, I, as a pastor, I look out over the church and I see uh, who responds to who and who doesn't respond to who. and. Uh, if what song is played, who responds to that? And we all have songs that ministers to our hearts and, and gets our get, gets our, uh, our our emotions going. But worship is not to get your emotions going. You're not worshiping yourself when you only respond to what gets your emotions going. Then you're worshiping yourself. But when you're able to worship God despite who is worshiping or the worship leader, despite who is singing or what song it is. And we go beyond basing our worship on our favorite song or basing our worship on who's singing the song. And we take it to the level that I'm worshiping you, Jesus. I want you to be happy. I want you to be pleased. God's love language is worship. And when we worship Him, He leans into us. Generation, or, uh, Genesis chapter 22, verse 5 says, And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with, with the donkey, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. If you look at the Hebrew word and worship, it means to bow down, to crouch, to fall down flat, humbly, beseech, uh, do reverence, make to stoop, to worship. And we see here in this particular story, God was uh, asking Abraham to sacrifice his son. But what God called sacrifice, Abraham said, you know what, I'm going to call it worship. And often we fail in this area because we're faced with situations that our flesh does not desire to or see the need to worship. Sitting in a worship service with your arms crossed, your, your face down, uh, uh, I, I've had a bad day, God prayed this, and God, we don't respond to God for God to do stuff to us or bring promises to pass. And we all want promises to be, to, be, uh, to, to come to pass, and we all want healings, and we all, but we do not worship God 
for God to do things for us. We worship God to make Him happy. We worship to bring pleasure to God. We have to, we, we have to understand that uh, God doesn't need our worship. He, does, he desires it. When you stand up in the middle of your situation, what you're faced with, and you can raise your hands and you can worship God and you can feel His presence. And nothing else is on your mind. Nothing else is on the agenda. Your hands are raised and tears streaming down your face and you're worshiping God. And you're saying, I know I'm going through a hard time, but I'm going to worship until my situation gets better. And even when my situation gets better, I'm going to continue to worship. What people fail to realize is, Worship creates an intimate relationship with God. When we understand what's important to the other person, then we're able to love them in a deeper relationship. When you understand how much God desires worship and, what, and, what, and how He leans into us, when, and, you, and you know this brings pleasure to Him, and the more you do it, the more of a... And, and, the more of a relationship that you will have with Jesus, the deeper and closer and more intimate relationship you will have with Him, the more you learn to worship. Revelation chapter 4, 11 tells us this, Thou hast created all things, meaning us, and for thy pleasure, meaning us, they were created. We were created for God. It brings pleasure to God when you begin to interact with Him. Why do you think Satan attempts to place dreams and goals and agendas in front of you that takes precious time away from you being with God and worshiping Him? You see, Jesus no longer has any pleasure for Satan. But when a child of God begins to interact with God and Satan sees the pleasure that it brings God, it infuriates Satan. When, you're bringing, when you begin to worship God and you bring pleasure to God, you're infuriating the devil. Real worship is not about us. It's about Jesus. When you come to church and you do not worship God because of this, because of that, you fill in the blank. You're not hurting anybody else in this church or anybody else but, but you. You have to understand worship is not about you and I. It is about Jesus. When we draw near to God, James 4.8 tells us He draws near to us. The last area that you can grow spiritually, it's the one you're engaged in right now as you're listening to this video. Having a place to grow with other believers. Church attendance is important. Church attendance is necessary. Why? It's not about sitting in a pew. What these connect groups has, has been trying to encourage you to, to understand is, I need to be around my brothers and sisters on a daily basis. Like it or not, God's way of growing us is when we connect with others. You cannot grow spiritually and not be connected with your brothers and sisters. It is not possible. The Bible says that we are a body fitly joined together. You, you, do, you do not have this, this special case that you just need your time with you and God and, we, and, 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 and nothing else. And, and, and that lie has spread through the world. I don't need to go to church. I have my relationship with God. You cannot be part of a body of Christ without being fitly joined with them. Where two or three are gathered together, there am I in the midst of them. Jesus said that. So like it or not, God's way of growing us is when we connect with others. It's not about us and Him, but this is another part. This is why the enemy comes against our relationship so much. He, knew, he knows unhealed relational wounds wounds that you've acquired with, uh, by having relationships with other people it can impair and exhaust, and exhaust us 
And we say, why? I'm not even going to try anymore. All I do is get hurt. All I do is get is offended. Uh, I, I feel like a victim every time I come into church. That's what Satan wants you to un- wants you to feel. That's what Satan wants you to see. He don't want you to see that the church is your hope. He don't want to see. He don't want you to see that you need your brothers and sisters. We need to set the excuses aside from a bad relationship. We need to set the excuses aside from the pain of a bad relationship, the fear from a bad relationship, and the personality conflicts, and even the busyness, and get connected to God and God's people. That's why you're here tonight, to do just that. So let me encourage you, when you, when you focus on building your spiritual man, you're going to love how He rules your life. And you're going to see your spiritual man is going to be king of the mountain. I want to encourage you tonight to work on those four areas. I'm going to go back to them. You need a fresh air, a breath of fresh air to breathe into your prayer life, into your Bible reading, into your worship, and your relationship with other believers. If you are wanting to to come alive in in this last hour and become awakened and be involved in the body of Christ and be involved and used in the kingdom of God, allow God to work in those four areas of your life. Thank you, church, for coming together in each of your connect groups. We're praying for you. We're believing that that, that God's going to do great things in your family. Remember, church uh, is is at 10 a.m. this Sunday. Please get here early for prayer. Invite somebody. Bring somebody to church. Let's pray somebody through to the Holy Ghost again. Let's get somebody baptized in Jesus' name. Let's see revelation. Let's see God open His Word to people. Let's, Let's see Rima happen in this place on Sunday morning. Thank you, church. God bless you. Have a wonderful and blessed evening. In Jesus' name.